Dr. Edith Eager is the most amazing woman. Um, she's, she's a Holocaust survivor. She went into Auschwitz at age 16 and her parents were killed that first day. And she even watched her mother walk into the gas chamber. And hours later, she was forced to dance for uh, Dr. Mengele, the Nazi officer, for her survival and was given a loaf of bread, which she shared. Now, this is a really harsh way of starting it, but she has, she's now 90. She survived. She came out. She became a psychologist. She now specialises in helping people with PTSD. And she's written two amazing books, The Choice, Embrace the Possible and The Gift which I am kind of part way through reading. I keep crying. But um, oh my God. But the one thing she said already that I've gone, mm, is do not look at yourself as a victim. Look at yourself that you were victimised. She said, because if you look as a victim, you are put in such a low position of weakness. You know, he, this, he did this to me, she did this to me, the world did this to me, that it's really hard to kind of, stand strong and recover from that whereas if you go I was victimized but I am not a victim and even perhaps to turn it into I am not a victim I have now become a victor however it works for you but honestly this woman is just amazing so this is Marisha Trembetska for my love your creativity and make money podcast and there's this mythology isn't there this dark myth that all creatives are messed up and you know we're crazy and we've got no sense of responsibility for money and we're all addicts and we all choose to live a life weird life and all that stuff and I think it is getting better particularly now we can all work from well freelance and remote working and people understand that a steady job is definitely not the only option in life but some great art has come from pain not all great art comes from tragedy. I had a huge row with, and in fact, it ended the relationship with a, a love ride I had for about a decade on and off. And amazing uh, artist, actor himself, just incredible. I mean, incredible. But he was trying to argue that all art and great art, and he used Marlon Brando as an example, was made by those who had a tragic life. And I really do not believe this. We got into a fairly massive row about it. And then he went, oh, you make great art. And I'm like, I'm, and I just was like, don't judge me. Don't think just because, yeah, there's been tragedies in my life. Because honestly, who, who doesn't have tragedies in their life, right? But of course, great art is made of something that is our interpretation of the world. And it can be beautiful things. And it can also be really sad things and dark things but there's something about this I am not a victim I was victimized it suddenly makes you go and then I can create from that it's it's my thought of the week really and but it makes me feel a bit more yeah when someone did this or this happened or you know when my partner died of liver cancer you know you feel like you get so angry with the world or how people were around you at the point and I'm aware I'm sharing some personal stuff here, but that's okay, right? Um, you're listening to me, I guess, by now, because you <laughs> Well, a myriad of reasons. But, you know, the, the work we make from lust, from love, from loss, from anger, from... Honestly, we've just got to keep making the work and understanding that that particular thing that I've just been through, with whatever you're going through right now, you were not a victim. You were victimised in a particular situation. It was circumstances and it is up to you to become a victor. I don't know if she said the victor bit. I might have added that to her. But she definitely said the bit about a victim and victimised, you know. Say, so I was victimised and I am going to be a victor in my life. Victory is going to be my life. And what do I choose victory to be? I am going to finish this next creative project. I am going to get it back on the world. I am going to get back on stage. All the things that we, we need to do we need to do to keep moving forward in our creative life i am going to keep trying to sell my album sell my book keep marketing so it is about the money part don't give up if you've got a a wonderful creative project that you finished and is out there world, keep on pushing it don't give it up if you spent that much time and love trust me there's people out there who are going to love it and want to, you just might not have met them all yet i know um when I tour my Queen the Fucking World show and the Singing Psychic show, I tend to do them 
sometimes in the same theatre, sometimes in two different venues I've done in Edinburgh before. So I'll do two one out solo shows and they're not. And some people love the singing psychic and would never come to see Queen. Some people are fanatical about the singing psychic, but equally I know some people who way prefer my Queen work, including my mother, which is insane, I think about it, but it's an intelligent piece. It's about sexual politics. It's very researched. It's arts council funded. I love both pieces of work. They're very different. But I'm aware that, and I'm aware that some nights I'll have sold out more on Queen than the singing psychic. And then some nights everyone's in the singing psychic and say on a quiet night in Edinburgh, hardly anyone's in Queen. And I'm like, I don't get it. But it's kind of okay that I don't get it. But all I know is I make the work, I need, I will keep touring the work, right? For me now, keeping the singing psychic going means I'm doing every week a singing psychic song of the week podcast, which you may or may not have come across, but you'll be able to find it. Just put the singing psychic podcast. My queen show, I'm like, well, how is she going to live next? What's the next instalment before we all start gigging again? And there will be one. I've got some ideas. It's just about focus. So there we are. Don't be a victim. Or don't see yourself. Choose not to see yourself as a victim, even though it's horrendous. And choose to see that you were victimised because you can find power in that. So obviously she's written these books, The Choice and also The Gift. Dr. Edith Eager, E-G-E-R. She's now 90 something. I mean, come on, what a woman. So I particularly like the fact that she never chose to tell her tale. And then someone said to her, you do know all the voices coming out of Auschwitz of these that people have survived. They're all men. There's Viktor Frankl. He went in, as she says, into Auschwitz as a doctor in his mid 30s. She went in as a 16 year old girl. It's a very different thing. So she decided because the only voices that were speaking up about, you know, the horrendousness of the Holocaust was men that she therefore had to speak. She understood her voice to be so important. So I would say your voice is important. This is part of it. Your voice, your telling, your creative brilliance and you weaving the strands of your creativity and your life and your trauma and your love in the way you do is completely going to touch someone's heart. So you've just got to keep making it. On at Marisha T on Instagram and Twitter, at Marisha Trembetsk on, on Facebook. That's for booking my singing psychic gig, my singing psychic game show, my Queen the Fucking World show, and indeed even talking about creativity. If you want to book me as an actor, my London agent is Dulcie Houston at CCA Management. Hope all is well. Have a great day.